Hi, this is Steve Trumbull with Flight Global. I'm here at the MBDA stand at the Singapore Air Show, and I'm here to talk to Graham Thompson, head of military advisors for MBDA, about the, the missile um, uh, candidates that MBDA is offering for the F-35 Joint Strike Fighter. What has MBDA done so far with uh, the ASRAM integration for F-35? Okay. Um, you're probably aware that uh, the UK has uh, Lockheed Martin under contract uh, as part of their two billion pound involvement in the SDD phase right, from the UK. Part of that two billion pounds funding is paying for the integration of ASRAM on the internal air-to-air stations and external underwing stations, one in the eleven, all right, for Block Three. So at the end of SDD Block Three, ASRAM will be fully integrated to the stable version both internal and, and external. Okay? And we're helping with that integration program at the moment. They've got us under contract too, so we're providing all the hardware and that sort of stuff. Well, and, and talk about, you know, why bring, why bring ASRAM into the program? Uh, there is some uh, debate about whether or not you need more than just one missile. Uh, it, it will cost more to integrate, but uh, obviously the UK has its own interests. Uh, Norway is also proposing a missile. The Israelis also want to propose their missiles. What, is, what does it mean to bring in uh, uh, these kinds of options? Well, you've probably got to go back to when the UK selected ASRAM in the first place. It wanted a self-defense missile for its aircraft, but what he wanted was something more than that. That was the major criteria. The longest reach, fastest flyout IR missile they could get its hands on. All right? So they could kill the guy before he actually squeezed the trigger. Okay? Now, you think, okay... Let's take that a stage further. What sort of ranges are we looking at in terms of this? Well, for the missile itself, you're looking at very close in ranges. You're aware that the Australian Air Force has done an over-the-shoulder shot to a target, a target behind them. You're looking at ranges out to what one would normally consider BVR ranges. Right? Now, guys will say on some of the current missiles that are out there, the thrust vector ones, ah, well, we can go out far as well. Yes, OK, fine, but whatever they claim... Remember, ASRAM has got 70% more motor in than any of those other missiles because the body diameter is not 5 inches, it's 6.5 inches, and you can work out the mathematics yourself. And that 70% extra motor gives you the incredible capability that ASRAM actually has. Can you also talk about some of the unique integration challenges for, for ASRAM? I think that uh, they, they've talked about the trapeze uh, design for the yep. weapons bay door. Yep, yep. Um, because ASRAM has the lock-after launch capability, that's why you can actually integrate it in the bay, because the lock-after launch system compensates for the fact that you're actually getting airframe shielding, all right? Right. and you might not be able to see the target at launch. But the trapeze system is actually quite easy. It fits on the air-to-air station, and as the doors open, it just swings down. Because the missile is rail-launched, it's not jettison-launched, as, um, as AMRAM is. Okay. And has that been tested yet, the uh, trapeze function, or uh, in I bench think tests? Or not in flight yet. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and uh, can you talk about other missiles like Meteor? Is, is, uh, is that also um, being looked at for, for F-35 integration at some point? It is. The, the UK MOD are currently funding Lockheed on an integration study, not only for the Stovall version, but also for the CTOL and the Carrier version, to look at total Meteor integration. Um, Lockheed are studying that at the moment. They've done an initial um, assessment, which was done uh, 18 months to two years ago, which shows you can actually get four meteors in the bay, all right, on both the Stovall and on the CTOL version.